Now, on the lesson that we're going to be working on today is part of what we finished out a little bit yesterday. When we're making a decision to go to the left, as an example, so it's a, a natural thing for us to always think about, I want to catch my horse. But if you do, you can do things that will cause your horse to catch you. And just when you're approach, like approaching that kind of a thing, that's all about watching what the muscles are doing that formulate the decision of the horse. When we're making a decision to go to the left, as an example, if you've picked up the rein here with your in my right hand to pick up the, the slack or the looseness of the rein, and now this hand moves over there, that becomes the give to the bit. That's your change of direction. And what happens a lot of times when we're trying to teach the, or using the normal conventional way of doing it, we'll pick up and we'll pull the horse. And there's nothing really wrong with that. But when we're trying to teach the horse to be light on the softness of their give, we want to do this where you're not holding the rein at all. You're just following the rein. So as you follow that, then you have that horse get softer and softer in the bridle. But if you find yourself doing this with your horse just because you want to steer it, that you we're actually teaching resistance when we do that. If I'm really willing to pull on this horse, she's going to be willing to resist my pull. Because horses will actually resist pressure. They don't typically move away from pressure. They more, <clears throat> more typically move away from contact. But if we start adding excessive pressure to something, um, they will, you know, usually resist it. So we want to get this down to where we're going to change direction. We just follow that line, pick that line up. So let's say I do this and she gives, my reward is coming back to the middle. Well, we talked yesterday about the center of the rein being the buckle. Many of the reins don't have a buckle on them, but that's just the center. So once we go to the, move it over there, and now from this point, once the horse is given, then we'll do this and put the leg here so we ask the back feet to step around. And then we bring the leg, my left leg, now, any time that you ask your horse to make a decision of its feet, they may not be in the position to give you the decision of their feet, meaning that they may do something else before they give you that decision. So you want to realize that it's our responsibility to know what the actual movement is that we're asking for so we can be prepared to release a reward when that shows up. So as I pick up the horse, the first thing she has to be is soft in the bridle. There's the softness. Now my calf comes and searches for her and there I found her and that's where the back feet from go from. So it's your calf that actually moves the horse, not your ankle or your spur. And if you think about it, as, you're bring, as I'm bringing my leg to her and I, my calf touches first, and my, as my calf touches her, if I think I need to get my ankle to her, I've pushed right through the calf to get the ankle. So I've added more pressure than I needed to in the first place. Now, we talked yesterday, and I'm not trying to, trying to add too many things here, but we talked yesterday about backing into a pivot. I talked about a little dance, and it's, I don't want to mislead you, this is not really a dance, but it, it goes along with what we're doing. So if I ask her to back up, and now I move my hand over here, I get a displacement of the front foot. And she's, as she's backing up and move my hand over here, I get a displacement of that foot. And so now I have a back that's going on, just a displacement. Every time she displaces, she is setting into the hindquarter. Okay? So that's another way that you can you kind of learn some of the refinements of your feeling of the horse is asking for something like that. So, again, this is where your goal will get in, in the way of your process. So if I'm backing her up, and I want to move her forehand over to the left, I have to wait for that decision to happen. I can't start trying to make her pull over. That's not the goal. It's the goal is for her to make a decision to find that open door. Have closed doors, open door. 
okay? So the reins are touching the neck, open door. And all I'm doing is turning my wrist out, or turning my wrist towards the ground, which opens the door. So when, you're, when your hands are in this position against the neck, where your thumbs are basically up, you just rotate that palm down, you have an open door. This rein is still touching, but it's not demanding anything. Now the question will usually come up, are you using leg? Well, yes, <laughs> you're using leg. But when you, when people, at least in my experience, when people start asking, are you using leg? They're, they're thinking, come, come on, they're moving, doing that kind of stuff with their leg to, use, to make the horse move over. This is so, and I'm gonna go around and show each of you what your, ultimately, what your leg contact should feel like. And a lot of times it's you're like, wow, I, just, I, just, I can't even hardly feel that. And that's the point. So from this point here, my, I'm going to start bringing my leg to this horse, and I'm starting now. There, I just felt her. And what I actually felt was my stirrup leather. Okay, but because I felt the stirrup leather, the stirrup leather, le leather touched her. Your, your horse has the ability to feel... If you touch this knuckle or that knuckle on your hand, you feel the difference, and so does your horse. So you'll see people making these big exaggerated motions with their legs to get the horse to do something, and the horse knows if I touched her here or here. So as your uh, refinements go along in your horse, whomever is watching you shouldn't really be able to detect what you're doing that's causing these things to happen. And, and that's the important thing that we have to realize that there is such a, a refinement in every one of these horses if we give them a chance to, to demonstrate it, you know, uh, so you're not doing exaggerated things. Okay, so this is the simplicity of it. So now let's say when you're, that you, each of you get on your horses and they, let's say you get on, I get on this horse and she immediately starts to walk off. And I didn't ask her to walk off. I'm just going to pick up a line, a rein, my choice, and start asking her to give to the bit give to the bit, and now I will ask her for softness and a disengagement. And then I'll come in here with this rein and see if I can find a backup. Okay? You're looking for it, you're not demanding it. That's the important part of it. So when your horse starts to walk off, you don't want to say, whoa, 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 and grab the horse. Use the decision of the, the, the energy of the horse and the, if the horse is walking off, you slowly pick up a rein. You're keeping your hands in the platform area. My hand is moving out a little bit. There, now I just drop my seat, and there's my pivot. Come in and see if I can get a backup. Now, on the puppet rein, you have that same thing you can do. So your horse is moving off. You start your decision here. And now we're going to come into this pivot. Then I pick up that rein, puppet rein, and move the foot over. Come in this direction. Come down into the pivot. Pick up this rein. Move over. So this is the lightness of it. And 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 any of and all of these these demonstrations of this rein, the rein is never being held. It's being chased or followed to cause these decisions. And all of these horses, not today perhaps, but all of these horses can be as light as this if these are within the interest of your horse. <laughs> so I just, I'll just keep repeating that to you so you don't get off track, and you will get off track, but, it, but just try to realize what you're, what you're doing with your horse. So, and towards the end of the day today, what we want to do is see people uh, give you two reins and see if you lose your mind or not. And what I mean by that is, as soon as you have two reins given back to you, you'll find yourself doing the things that you normally do. And, and that's, you know, that should be an eye-opener for all of us. But if, we, if I'm going to use two reins to back this horse up like I demonstrated yesterday, as I close my fingers, there I just found her mouth. Okay? So from here, I can start to change my seat and now I have the backup, but I'm not changing my hands. And she's changing her, she's dropping her head that's causing her to uh, get softer in the bridle, but I'm not doing this to back her up. Now remember we talked a little bit about 
If we push on our stirrups, what happens? Anybody? Your legs come in on the horse. No, if I push on your stirrups, your legs come out. But oh. your but your knees like you you'll feel you'll feel pressure on the inside of your knee, and that's your throttle. So, and then you and you'll discover as you play with this through different times today that when you're asking your horse to back up, and this is not typically in the single rein thing. This is when you have two reins. But if I push on my on my legs like that, it, for some reason it has the effect of the horse going straight or backwards. Well, the purpose of, the, what I'm, of this, of using the horse, is that you are thinking about using the horse, not thinking, no, don't do that. If the horse walks off and you do this, it still doesn't teach them to stand still. <laughs> so what, what teaches them to stand still has a little bit to do with your dismount. So if you go to get off the horse and then get back on the horse, and the horse stands still, then you reward him. But if, if you go to get off the horse and the horse moves away, uh, then you need to work on that dismount to have them stand still. And the thing is, you want to reward them for the right thing. And that's what you're trying to... It's hard for us sometimes to understand what the right thing is to reward the horse. <clears throat> um, a lot of times our mounting our procedure of mounting, particularly if you're using the cantle and the pommel, or the horn and the pommel, uh, or the cantle rather, to get on the horse, you're actually pulling the horse off balance. So by the time you swing off the horse, when you get on the horse, you're already sending the momentum someplace and the horse just says, well, I'm going to move over here because I can't stand anymore. You know, so it has a lot to do with us, the way that we mount. Let's go ride. <laughs>